If you got your Bibles there with you this morning, let's go please to John's Gospel, chapter 4. John chapter 4. And uh, <clears throat> was thinking about the triple digit temperatures. And, you know, last night about midnight we had our power blip off. And, <clears throat> and then I said, you know, of course praying that it would come back on. And it came back on and it turned back off. And, and so I said, well, there was probably, you know, a lot of demand from people cooling their, their homes and their businesses, you know, with all the high temperatures. And I started to think about, uh, you know, when it gets that hot outside that people get parched or they get thirsty and started to think about the woman at the well and the rivers of living water. And so uh, John chapter 4, if we could just begin with a word of prayer there this morning. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your living word this morning. We thank you, your words are life to those that find them and health to all of our flesh. And Lord, we mix faith with the word of God this morning. And we believe, Father, that we receive sustenance, meat to eat, and strength to move forward in the plan and the call of God. And a divine grace that empowers us to move beyond our natural abilities. And Lord, into the supernatural realm where there is no limit to your strength, where there is no uh, limit to your miraculous power. And we thank you this morning for giving us understanding to hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to the church in this hour. That Father, though there's many that are dry and parched, and crumbling and decaying. And Lord, even some of your saints that once knew you and walked in the power of your spirit. God, heal the backslider this morning. God, revive the army of dead, dry bones. Lord, we prophesy by faith to that great army. That in the name of Jesus, God, you would revive your church. That the sleeping giant would truly awake. And that, God, we would see a move of the Spirit. And we would see a harvest greater than the Jesus movement of the 70s. That we would see the power of the Spirit of God in demonstration and manifestation greater than Azusa Street revival. Father, we're believing and we're calling forth, God, that you would heal our nation as your people that are called by your name would humble themselves and pray. And turn from our wicked ways and every idol that is not pleasing in your sight. And Father, we would honor you again and seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. And God, this morning, hear from heaven and heal our land. Rid this nation of the Antichrist spirit that seeks to corrupt and to decay the moral fiber of our families and our nation. And God, remember the godly men and women that founded this nation. Uh, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all founded upon the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ. Restore the foundations of our nation, Father, through the preaching and the teaching of the truth of your word. And let those that sit in darkness see a great light. Lord, that the church, not the buildings, but the people, the church, be the church. And let us carry this kingdom of God, this treasure that we have in earthen vessels to a lost and a dying world. And pour out rivers of life to those that thirst, Father. We thank you for that privilege and that opportunity for being called into your kingdom for such a time as this. And we are the right people in the right place at the right time to see the revival of the Holy Ghost in our in this season we thank you for it and praise you for it in jesus name hallelujah 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 thank you lord you know what happens when the former and the latter rain comes together harvest time amen and so uh, harvest time is always exciting because at harvest time you get a lot of people saved and when you get a lot of people born again you got a lot of babies in the church and babies just create a buzz and an excitement 
and people, you know, a lot of activity. They got to get the nursery ready and the baby's ring ready. And, you know, people get excited. It's the same way in the church. Amen. So get ready, church. Get ready. Get ready for that. John chapter 4, of course, we alluded to this, tells the story of the woman at the well. And uh, verse 7 said, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith to her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away to the city to buy meat. Now, if you understood the, the time and the Jewish culture at that time, you would understand how remarkable it is that Jesus would even speak to this woman from Samaria. Because the Jews at that time had had a family feud with the Samaritans. And in the family feud, they said, we're not talking to you. We're giving you the silent treatment. Matter of fact, they considered them uh, not as good as they were. And they had no dealings with the Samaritans. So Jesus came and just broke that barrier. Amen. He, he, he broke down that family feud and he spoke to her. And he said, give me to drink. In verse 9, then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered, said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee, living water. The Amplified Bible said, Jesus answered her, if you had only known and had recognized God's gift. I always think about reading that, the scripture that said, uh, be careful to entertain strangers in Hebrews. For in entertaining strangers, some have entertained angels unawares. Amen. Amen. I always think about that scripture, reading that. And, and, she, and Jesus said, if you had perceived who it is, the gift of God, who's saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. Instead of you wondering why I'm talking to you, asking you for this water from this well, you, you would have asked me for living water. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now we know, you know, it, you, you could go... Your body can go a while without food, but, but you have to have water to live. God just created our physical bodies like that. But He's talking about in the Spirit, being born again of the Spirit and water. He said, this would have been living water if you knew who was talking to you. You perceived and recognized. Verse 11, the woman saith to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. She's still in the natural. Now sometimes it takes a while. You understand, we, we've been out in the world all week. We've been working all week. We've been rubbing shoulders in the traffic jams. We, we've been with natural carnal people all week. And sometimes it takes a while for your, for your mind and for your spirit to get back over in the realm of the spirit. Right? Because first she said, wait a minute. Why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. She's, she's still into that cultural uh, blockage there. Mindset. And secondly, she said, how, how can I get you something out of the well? You don't even have a ladle to scoop down into the well. She's still in the carnal mind, in the natural thinking. Amen. How many, how many of you know sometimes the Lord has to give you enough word till you get over into the realm of thinking the mind of Christ? Amen. The well is deep. From whence hast thou that living water? Art thou greater then our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered, said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Somebody say in him. See, there's, there's so much emphasis in our society and culture on the outward appearance. What's outside? What kind of house? What kind of car they have? What kind of clothes they're wearing? You know, what kind of, what the wind, the wind machine can do and the lighting can do and the makeup can do. But really, Jesus said the living water 
is on the inside. And there's a lot of people you come and talk to about Jesus, the bearer of the living water, and they said, they talk to you everything that's on the outside. Well, I can't change this and I can't change that. And really, you don't have the power to change the outside. There has to be a change on the inside yes. for there to be any change on the outside. Amen. And so he said in verse 14, continuing, I shall give him, the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. How many of you know, thank God that he is able to heal cancer. And thank God he's able to heal AIDS. And thank God he can bring people out of wheelchairs and cure arthritis. And he can cure diseases they haven't even discovered yet. But the greatest miracle is a soul being born again to the kingdom of God. The greatest miracle is salvation of a soul. The greatest miracle. Being born from the, from the uh, rivers of living water from the inside out. And so uh, <clears throat> the woman said, I think in verse 15, by verse 15, thank God she's finally starting to catch on. Amen. The woman says, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus saith to her, go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered, said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that saidest thou truly. I mean, you know the expression, you can fool some of the people some of the time. <laughs> but really, you can fool God none of the time. None of the time. Amen. And I really don't understand all the great lengths that people go to to deceive. And sometimes they've got to remember what they told you the last time so that their, new, their story now is consistent with what they told you before. But really, you fool God none of the time. And so Jesus said, you said, you said truly that you have no husband because the man you're living with now is not your husband. And you've had five husbands. In verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus saith to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship you know not what we worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, hallelujah, and now is when true worshipers, somebody say true worshipers. <laughs> See, there's a correlation or there's a link between worship to God in spirit and in truth. Not that, Lord, I'm coming to ask you for something, but Lord, I'm just coming to praise you for your goodness and for your mercy and for who you are and to thank you and to just give you glory. And there's a correlation between that and the rivers of living water that flow. Yes. That, that interaction, that relationship and praise and worship and thanksgiving to God. Amen? Yes. And he said, you, you ever seen a, a, a city street where it's, where it's really, really hot? And uh, they, some, sometimes they'll open the fire hydrant for the kids, you know, to play. Or it's just too hot outside and they open up the pool and... and uh, the scripture talks about that there was a season that an angel came down and stirred up a pool that was at Solomon's porch. And at Solomon's porch, they gathered all these sick and lame people. And the, the Bible said at a certain season, the angel came down and stirred up that water. And the first one that got in there got healed. Amen. And so there was a man there that was lame. The Bible said he had a condition for 38 years. How many of you know some people have struggled with some things for so long they just just decided, well, I just got to live with it. Until the master came. And he said, how come you don't go into that pool? 
Well, how many of you know that a lot of times God asks you a question, He already knows the answer, but He won't see what you're going to say. Just like when He asked Adam, Adam, where art thou? He didn't ask him that because He didn't know where He was. Getting Adam to answer. What does Adam want to say? So He asked this man on, on this uh, stretcher that is lame, He said, how come you don't get into that pool? Because when the, when the uh, heaven comes to earth through that angel, the power of God comes to earth and touches the properties of that water change. And now it's not just a swimming pool, but there's miraculous healing properties in that pool when, when heaven touches earth. Jesus talking about living water. Hallelujah. Somebody say there's something good in the water. Now, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have bottled water. I wish I'd have thought of bottled water. I would have bottled a lot of water. <laughs> it said, bring me a few bottles and don't spare. Bring all the bottles you can. I'm going to fill them with water and sell it at Walmart. <laughs> but when I was a kid, you wouldn't think of paying a dollar for a bottle of water. Or two dollars. If I put vitamins in it, made it different colors. Oh, the blue one, the orange one, the red one. So we're not talking about marketing. Jesus said that uh, heaven has come to the earth. If you perceived who this is talking to this woman, and he told the man on the stretcher, if you understood the properties in that water, you get to that water. And what did that man tell him? The physical limitation. I, I can't get to that water because every time I try to get there, somebody beats me to it. And somebody else is always the first one in the pool. That's why I sat here for 38 years. But see, today was, that day was his day. That day was his day to receive his miracle. Hallelujah. The master had come. To give him a special pass. The master was sent to that man. So he could receive his healing. Amen. And the master sent to this lady at the well. And he said the hour comes. And it is now. When true worshippers shall worship the father. In spirit and in truth. And the father seeks such. To worship him. And that's just the thing about God. When, when you got something that's really, 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 really good, you want to share it with somebody. Because it's too good just for yourself. You want to share it with somebody. And so God has so many good things and, and He's so blessed, He wants to share it with people. And the scripture said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth to show Himself strong on the behalf of somebody whose heart is perfect towards Him. Amen. Amen. So you can have a perfect heart towards God. The Bible talks about kings in the Old Testament whose heart was perfect towards the Lord. Amen. And so, uh, John chapter 7, please. John chapter 7, let's go over a few and look at the Feast of Tabernacles. John seven thirty seven. In the, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, and he's talking to the ones that are thirsty. I mean, you know, the best water you ever had is when you're thirsty. <laughs> Amen. If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. I like what Pastor Mark said. He said, we got too many thinkers in the church and not enough drinkers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that simply means this. If the world knew that the real happy hour was in the church. I'll say that again. If the world knew that the real happy hour was in the church. And then we start drinking. Amen. So there's something good in the water of God. I said there's something good in the water of God. Amen. Amen. 
So he said, come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Amplified Bible says, he who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. <laughs> now when it's triple digits outside, when it's, I mean, if we read about wildfires and pray for rain for those wildfires and, and it's just hot and it's dangerously hot and people have to stay hydrated in the natural. I draw a parallel to the spiritual condition of our nation. And Jesus said, those that are thirsty, not same old, same old religion, but those that are thirsty, come to me and drink. How many of you know you drink by faith? Yes. That's how you drink, by faith. Otherwise, you're like that woman at the well. He said, drink? How is it that you're talking to me? And how are you going to draw into that well? You have nothing. You're still in the natural realm. See? But you drink by faith. I said you drink by faith this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The parenthetically he said in verse 9, but this spake he of the Spirit. Somebody say the Spirit. Spirit. Which they that believe on him should receive. See, you should receive the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, you should receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? It's right there. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Remember the book of Acts chapter 1? Verse 8, Jesus said, But you shall be endued with power. Anybody remember that? Yeah. <laughs> After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you'll be endued with power from on high. What happens if you try to go out and witness without that power? Have you tried it? <laughs> you need the power from on high. Amen. And that's the river of living water that flows in believers. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Did y'all wear your shouting clothes this morning? Or did you leave them at home in the closet? I know you're saving for Sunday night service. Uh, Isaiah chapter 55, please. Isaiah 55. Thank God for the word. I come to get a drink this morning from the Holy Ghost. How many of you uh, know that the devil is a master of mirages? That means there are people parched in the desert and he shows them something that looks like water. And it looks like it's going to provide happiness and fulfillment. But it's just a mirage. Because the wages of sin is death. Is that right? But uh, God is not a counterfeiter. Amen. So I want the real rivers of living water from the Lord. Uh-huh. 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 He said in Isaiah 55, Ho, sometimes you've got to yell out and get people's attention. Ho or yo. Hello. I always used to wonder that. I'd listen to so many messages, so many sermons. The preacher always say, hello. Hello. And I'd always sit there and say, why is he saying that? I'm sitting right there. But then I started preaching. I said, eh. That's why he's saying hello. Sometimes if you don't say hello, you think you're preaching to yourself. Hello. Isaiah 55. Hello. Everyone that thirsteth. Now doesn't that sound like? What Jesus said in John 7, 37. 
him that's thirsty. That's who he's talking to. Come to the water. You know, our family has been to the to the water parks. And uh, I'm trying to remember which one had a had a three had that three person water that what's that thing called? Inflatable thing. Three of us, all three of us got on. And they had this water like roller coaster water slide. And those jets just pushed you up there. Pushed you way up there. And then guess what? If you go up that high, coming down, baby. It's just something about being on that water slide that you're not uh, perplexed about the mortgage. There's no amortization table going through your mind. You just, one on that water slide. And here's the Lord saying, I have provided for you in the struggles and the cares of life living water that would refresh, that would revive, that would, there would be a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, hallelujah, that, that life would come back into your being. An excitement for getting up in the morning. God said, I put that in the Spirit of God. Rivers of life. Oh, Everyone that's thirsty, come to the water. And he that has no money, hallelujah. Now you know this, this isn't something that's in the world. They're not marketing to people with no money. Right? But the Lord said, I don't care what you look like. You got any money? Come. Buy and eat. Because Jesus has already paid the price. I said, Jesus has already paid the price. Hallelujah. To me, that's more exciting than Super Walmart. Come. Buy with no money. Buy and eat. Yea, come. Buy wine and milk without money, without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you say, wait a minute, Lord. Well, you know, when I went to the grocery store, I bought money and I, and I bought the whole grain bread. It's good for you. It is bread. Yes. But the Lord's saying, what, what I'm giving you is eternal sustenance. You don't have to check the expiration date. You don't have to check if it's fully hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. <laughs> This is just pure goodness if you put the nutrients on the lake. There's no hidden agenda. There's no hidden motive. There's no angle. Just come. Drink. This is good news. Come and drink. It's like the vacation Bible school. You know? We just say, come on out. Whether you, you belong to this church or not, come on, bring your kids. Kids have been bouncing off the walls at home. Bring them for a week to the church. We got we got water activities. We got we had a go kart track out here. Did you all know that? You don't know that unless you're my friend on Facebook. I posted pictures. I was out there on the go kart track with those kids. I didn't think I could fit in one of those cars, but he said, "Yeah, come on in here." So my knees were touching my chin. I was like, ah, we're driving around there. Amen. But we said, we, we don't care if you belong to a church or you've got any money. Come on. Ride the go-karts. But we're going to tell you about Jesus. We're going to tell you why it doesn't cost anything. Because Jesus has paid the price. Amen. He's already paid the bill. It's just something about it. You know, you go out to eat lunch or dinner or something, and, and the server says separate checks or whatever, and somebody just takes a check, puts it in the pocket, taking care of it. All of a sudden, everything tastes better. <laughs> that was the best lunch I had. And the dessert was incredible. So Jesus wants you to know He's paid the price. All you that are thirsty, He's not talking about that which has an expiration date. He's not talking about that which is perishable. He's not talking about that that makes you happy for just a week or two. 
but eternal joy that springs back whether the sun's out or it's raining outside. I got joy. Amen. You know, there's a song we sing, I, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Amen. And then we'd sing, you can't tell it like I can what he's done for me. <laughs> Amen. I get joy. Why are you spending money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which doesn't satisfy, satisfies not. Hearken diligently to me. Everybody say it out loud. God's Word, God's word. Is, God is God speaking to me? Speaking to me. How many people go to conferences and go all over? And we'll, you know, I'm not going to be critical, but we give you a personal word. You know, I need a word. Here's a word right here, Isaiah 55. If you're thirsty, come to the Lord. Come to the Word. You have no money? That's all right. Come on. I remember we used to go to a Rhema camp meeting. Dan Henry would get up there and he'd say, you know, Thursday's going to be Rhema Day. And they say, well, what's Rhema Day? He said, well, Rhema Day is a double offer. So a lot of times Rhema Day would not be as well attended as all the other days. Amen. Uh-huh. He said, this is a double offer. And then uh, somebody said, well, uh, he said, so if you want to bring a dollar, bring two dollars. Bring $5, bring $10. So he says, somebody said, I'm not going to bring anything. He said, well, double it up and come on. <laughs> Are y'all here this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't have any money. When I came to the Lord, I didn't have any money. Are y'all here this morning? Yeah. Me and my, my friends were $1. Yeah. $5. $5 was a big offer. Amen. Amen. Then I started to think in terms of, you know, a certain amount of money, whatever that amount of money was, I'd always think, well, what's the tithe on that? To honor God with that. Amen. Not because I'm buying anything or repaying anything because I couldn't. But I'm thankful for what He's done. And I'm thankful for the Son of God. Amen. And it doesn't get old to me. Isaiah 55 doesn't get old. Well, I've heard that one before. Come and buy. Come and eat. But I don't take that for granted. The Lord said uh, there was a, a marriage supper. The king's son was getting married. And he said, I want you to invite all, all of my royal subjects. And uh, so he went and sent out all the invitations. And one by one, they had excuses why they couldn't come. To the marriage supper. And how many of you know that, uh, you know, my wife and I got married, uh, uh, I think I think the whole wedding was like, what, five or six hundred dollars. But you go try to do a wedding in 2012 for five or six hundred dollars. Probably some of you, your wedding was, you know, not even fifty dollars. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? But now they want a $10,000 wedding, $25,000. They want a $50,000 wedding. Amen. Amen. Want to spend more than a house cost on a wedding. <laughs> but the king had gone through great expense and great trouble. And his, really his son hung on a cross suspended between heaven and earth. And he had a crown of thorns pressed into his brow where he bled Drops of blood, innocent, sinless blood that had never sinned. Tempted in all points as you and I are, and yet without sin. The guiltless, uh, sinless Son of God hung on that cross. And they drove nails through His hands into that wooden cross. And they, drew, they drove nails through His ankle bones through that cross. And He paid the price for us to come and drink freely. And sometimes we just take it for granted. Just say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. But I believe in the name of Jesus. That July 4th and our holidays of this nation aren't just going to be about fireworks and barbecues. But I believe there's a call from heaven. Come and drink those that are thirsty this morning. 
Those that have had religion, religiosity, have gone through the motions. But God, we're thirsty. We've read about it. We've heard that the shadow of Peter healed those that were lame. Just his shadow. God let the power be in the church. Let the convicting power of your spirit reach this generation and this nation. Lord, I lift up all those that I personally know and all those that I don't know, multitudes, in the ministry this morning. I pray for encouragement. I pray for strength of the Spirit, that be, they be strengthened with might by your Spirit in the inward man, that Christ would dwell in their hearts by faith. They be rooted and grounded in love and have the strength to persevere and to carry on and to reap in due season, that they would not faint that they would consider Jesus, lest we be weary and faint in our minds. We consider the Son of God. We consider the price that He paid at Calvary that we could come without money. We could drink of the rivers of living water. That we could have Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night church. We don't take that for granted. We thank You, Lord, for these marvelous facilities You've blessed us with for the uh, comfort that you've given us, God. And we don't take that for granted. We thank you, Lord, that we could be uh, those individuals that could carry that same uh, river of living water to those that are parched and hopeless and helpless. The widows and the orphans and God, the weak in our society. Lord, we thank you that the church would be the church again. Restore all that the enemy has stolen, God. And Lord God, let your church bring you honor and glory again. We thank you, Lord. We take none of it for granted. We praise you for it. There's anybody under the sound of my voice this morning, you say, Pastor, I've never publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. The scripture says that if you will not be ashamed of me before men, then I will not be ashamed of you before my Father and all the holy angels of heaven. Would there be anybody here today, a man, a woman, a boy or girl, that would say, Pastor, that's me. Include me in that prayer. And you'd raise your hand this morning to receive Christ. Is there anybody today that needs Jesus? Anybody today? Father, this morning, we recall the story of Peter, the professional fisherman that fished all night. was discouraged and was frustrated. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will cast down again. God, I speak encouragement and strength to the churches, to the pastors, to the leaders, to the people of the church, that they would cast down again the nets, the salvation message. Lord God, let there be such a catch. Let there be such a catch. We'd have to call other boats, other churches to help. We prepare our hearts to receive the harvest. The harvest is now. The fields are white in the harvest. Thank you, Lord, for sending labors into your harvest. Those that have put their hand to the plow and do not look back, but press forward by the grace of God. To finish our course with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I pray for the people of God to have an inward strength to stand against the wiles of the enemy, to put on the full armor of God, to stand against scoffers and mockers and those that don't believe in the holy word of God. Help us to stay sanctified and pure and not react in the flesh. But Father, to keep ourselves, to keep our hearts with all diligence. That we might be vessels that are meet for the Master's use. We praise you for this church. We praise you for your people. We thank you 
that our best days are ahead of us. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the breakthrough that you have bought and paid for. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We want to ask you to please stand uh, this afternoon as we dismiss you. We want to bless you from Numbers chapter 6, verses 7. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Really, the Holy Ghost is a genius. And if you listen to Him, He will make you look smart. <laughs> Amen. Honey, why don't you come stand with me this morning. We bless you today. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We pray the love of God the communion of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We bless you this morning. We love you. We call you blessed. Amen. Don't forget tonight at 7 o'clock we come together again. Stay cool out there. <laughs>